So we're going to kick off the second day of the training by going into one of the biggest problems I see when I help troubleshoot other people's Ember apps, and that is how do you manage how do you manage state? So uh, this is the the biggest challenge that you start to run into as you move from the older style, uh, you know, server side rendered apps. Not, not server-side rendered in the sense of fast boot, but maybe a PHP app with, with some JavaScript uh, script sprinkled on. When you're dealing with a single page app, you don't get to boil the ocean every time the user clicks a link and you go to the next page. And so in order to manage this complexity and have the lifetime of that page view be essentially you know, minutes or hours, um, you gotta be able to, to strategize and execute well on a state management strategy. So thinking about the different kinds of state, uh, there are four categories that, that are pretty easy to solve once you recognize that a given state falls into this category. So the first is UI state, and this is usually something very short-lived, something that is not meaningful, uh, even when tracked over time, the exception being Google Analytics or something where you're studying user behavior. Uh, but an example of this might be you know, the expanded or collapsed state of some accordion widget on a page. You know, that, that doesn't need to go near a database. It doesn't need to be shared across multiple users. It's just needed to uh, make the presentation layer behave the way it's supposed to. So we have persisted state, and that's your Ember data stuff, anything that goes into a database. And the, the thing you smell for here is if the, that state has to live longer than the UI session, it needs to be persisted somewhere. Local storage and cookies count when, when I'm talking about persisted state. Those live longer than uh, you know, the, the, the amount of time the, the user's tab is open for that UI session. We have addressable state, which is dynamic segments in URLs and query params. Uh, anything that is URL driven, that is addressable. And then finally, there's, there's something new that I think is a game changer in terms of making a single page app feel, uh, feel like a first class rich client, you know, on par with, with a mobile app or something. Um, and the idea of draft state is if, if a user has to take a long time and put a lot of effort into creating something, like a comment on a GitHub issue, for example. You want to make sure that they don't accidentally like, drop a file into that browser tab and find themselves looking at that JPEG, knowing that, you know, that disappointing feeling that all of their hard work is gone, and they're going to hit the back button, and they won't see anything in that comment field anymore. For the record, GitHub handles this gracefully, but, but it's a great example of where you really want to have that there. If you spend 40 minutes writing something, you shouldn't be one drop event away from erasing all of that hard work. So uh, and, and as we go through a couple different kinds of state and we, we execute well on a state management strategy for our app, I want us to have uh, sort of a, a north star that we're shooting for, right? Uh, some core principles that regardless of the approach we take, we're going to try to adhere to them. So the first is uh, we want unidirectional data flow. And this is the same concept that uh, you, you find yourself using if you've ever used uh, Flux or Redux. It's, it's the idea of data being sort of pulled out of a store to be rendered on the screen. And then when users, you know, when there are click events or scroll events or mouse moves, anything that stems from a user interaction, that's going to be sort of an, an action that will go back down into the store. So the, the, core, uh, the core principle is we want to preserve the context of whatever generated that event as long as we can and kind of let that flow all the way through to you know, sort of the bottom layer of, layer of our app. You want to, to know that you're responding to a click and not just some change in a Boolean value. right? You don't want data data changes driving other data changes. That's how you end up with uh, one of the biggest performance killers in any single page app, where you have this sloshing of re-rendering going around, where your rendering logic might cause other things to change, which will trigger other re-renderings, which will trigger other re-renders. Re and sometimes it's like three or four DOM update waves before everything kind of settles. 
So you're, you're making the slowest part of your app touching the DOM. You're, you're doubling or tripling down on that work. Um, and it can happen very easily if you don't adhere to this data down, actions up principle. There is a concept called an observer in uh, Ember. It is overused uh, in that it's, it's meant to be a framework internal concept. It's meant to keep Ember in sync with something that is foreign to Ember, like a D3 visualization or a cookie or something like that, where you really have nothing to bind to. Um, there are almost no good uses of an observer uh, outside of that principal role. You can almost always use something like a computed property instead. And observers, because they are not coalesced together by this prioritized work queue that is it's called the Ember run loop that makes sure we're efficiently batching changes to things that are expensive to touch, because observers do not fall into you know, things covered by the run loop, they happen immediately. Um, this is a, another big performance killer and another state management snag that you can run into. So in terms of how we're going to take the app that we were working on yesterday and upgrade it, do, you know, touch on some state management best practices, uh, we're going to start by the ability to filter this list of posts on the left side and you know, we want to see that whatever we type in this box here, that's represented in the URL by, by a query param. So sh you should be able to send this link to your friend. I mean, if it weren't on localhost, you could send it to your friend. You could bookmark it and come back to it. You could refresh, and you would find that you're filtering on the same thing. So this is, this is the addressable state piece. For draft state, we want to be able to uh, write a comment and then uh, we should be able to see that, that some draft data exists for a particular post. And the key idea here is the ability to, to navigate to another post. Uh, sorry, I, I skipped a little ahead there. The key idea here is to be able to navigate to another post and come back and see that that draft comment associated with the appropriate post is waiting for you there. So it's not something that just is hanging around in that text area as you navigate around between blog posts. It is some temporary state that you're attaching to a persisted record so that if you walk away and come back, maybe you need to go and check, check another article because you're saying, you know, I like the way this other article addressed the same point you're talking about here. So you need to go like tab away and tab back and you want everything you are working on to be there, to be preserved for you. Uh, persisted state, which we just went through the animation there for, very simple, I want to save a comment. I want to persist it to the API. And then finally, we have a concept of UI state, and this is just this view layer only stuff. Uh, I just want to take this little metadata area that's at the top of the post full component, and I want that to be expandable and collapsible. But I want to make sure that uh, that state is also st like associated with a particular post and that as we navigate around the app sort of remembers that post number two we opened up this little metadata area um, but if we go to post number one it still remains closed. So this is this is the next set of exercises and uh, we're going to do this you know piece by piece and kind of examine you know what, what are the benefits of a particular approach to state management?